This could potentially be the biggest hurricane that we have seen in the Bay Area in over 100 years. And what that means is if you've lived here all your life, you've never experienced a hurricane this strong before. Now, that assumes that it hits us directly. And right now, that's what it looks like going to happen. And there's no way that the west coast of Florida is going to escape a major impact, but we don't know exactly where it's going to go just yet. What we do know is as it heads over the southern Gulf of Mexico, the wind shear is up here, but the storm is down there. So it's shielded from the wind shear. And because of that, National Hurricane Center making this a Category 4 for three time periods, actually. Look at that. Winds of 145 miles an hour. And they mention in their discussion that they may be too low with the intensity of this storm. And that's because at least three of or, or maybe even four of our hurricane models predict this could briefly be a Cat 5 hurricane. But here's the good news, if there is good news, and that's it's going to weaken. We know that as it starts to move north and interact with the jet stream and wind shear, it's going to weaken a little bit down to a Cat 3. But here's the problem. If a storm is a Cat 4, Cat 5 over the Gulf, it builds up that huge uh, surf and that huge swell and storm surge. And then it, even though it weakens as it makes its way towards land, it carries a lot of that storm surge with it. It does not, unfortunately, dissipate very quickly. It kind of lags 12 to 24 hours behind. So we'll have a Cat 3 storm with winds, but probably a Cat 4 type storm surge across the Bay Area. That's certainly possible. But the real question is exactly where does the center of the storm go? Does it go just north of Tampa Bay? That would push water into the bay. Does it go just south of Tampa Bay? That means the worst storm surge is from Manatee County down to Sarasota County. Again, the storm could be anywhere within this cone and even outside of it, outside chance of that, but it could be as far north as Crystal River, as far south as Naples. And remember, the storm's going to get bigger as it gets closer to us. So that means the impacts are going to be very widespread, bigger than the cone itself. The Gulf of Mexico is record hot right now, and that's why we're expecting it to be a Cat 4, maybe even briefly a Cat 5 in the Gulf of Mexico. So the reason why I'm showing you the spaghetti models is there's no more clarity than there was yesterday because there's still a big spread that goes from about Hernando County all the way down to just south of Fort Myers. So it really could be anywhere within there. And the consensus is right over Tampa Bay. That, those are the black lines, uh, just to give you an idea. Now, the official forecast from the National Hurricane Center is just slightly south of that. Let me show you the trend from the National Hurricane Center. Uh, last night at 11 p.m. at about this time, uh, the storm was projected, the center of the cone projected to go through Indian Rocks Beach. Then at 5 a.m. today, they moved it south to St. Pete Beach. Then at 11 a.m., they moved it south of the Skyway. This, you know, 20 miles makes a huge night and day difference in the amount of surge that we get here in the Bay Area. And then at 5 p.m., they kind of kept it where the uh, 11 a.m. track was, maybe shifted it a couple of miles south, but, but it really doesn't make much of a difference. The real key is which side of the bay does it hit, because it could force water in or out of the bay, and that makes a huge difference in terms of the impacts. All right, so here are our computer models from this morning, and it, it's still somewhat similar. The, uh, the American model is north towards, now the new one is towards Hernando County, but the earlier one was the Crystal River. And I show you the morning models because they're usually a little bit more reliable than the afternoon models. The European was on the south side of Tampa Bay. The newest European pushes the storm right over Egmont Channel and then right on top of downtown Tampa. The German model is right through Sarasota, and that's always been a pretty reliable model as well. So it's somewhere in that zone probably. Now for the next couple of days, for about the next, let's say, 48 hours or so, uh, the storm is it's going to be unaffected by the jet stream, probably through about Tuesday. But Tuesday morning, we'll start to see the jet stream interact. And watch what happens. Instead of moving straight east, all of a sudden it gets lifted to the north and pushed northeast. The question is, how far northeast? It is a critical question that we just cannot answer yet. So when are we going to see those tropical storm force winds arrive here in the Bay Area? As it stands right now, it'll probably be Wednesday morning. But again, the track is still a little bit in limbo, so it could be a little later during the day on Wednesday. Could even be earlier, but it's more likely to be slightly later. If it moves in any direction, it'll be slightly slower and slightly later. But plan on tropical storm force winds most of the day Wednesday, and then those hurricane force winds wherever the storm makes landfall sometime Wednesday afternoon into Wednesday evening, according to the latest National Hurricane Center track. So you can see the storm's moving east, and so are the waves getting larger and larger as the storm gets stronger and starts to expand. So the storm will weaken as it heads towards land a little bit, but at the same time, it's going to expand its wind field, and so it will expand its surge. So you can watch this kind of making its way in. It's an offshore wind most of Wednesday, but Wednesday evening, the wind switches onshore, and it pushes that surge in. 
So I want to go through a couple of storm surge scenarios for you. If the storm makes landfall in Pinellas County north of Tampa Bay with the counterclockwise flow, it pushes all that water straight into Tampa Bay and everybody really from Clearwater, maybe Tarpon Springs, all the way south across the bay and into the bay and down towards Lombo Key, everybody sees the surge. This is a worst case scenario. And if we do see surge right into the bay, well, it's likely to be higher than the 1921 hurricane of 11 feet. Helene was seven feet. It could be double that, not out of the question. So it would be a tremendous surge into Tampa Bay. Storm surge scenario two takes the system further south, makes landfall around Lombok here, Anna Maria Island. And then in that case, we have offshore winds in Tampa Bay. So we do not see the flooding across Pinellas County and Hillsborough County, or at least nearly as much. It goes from catastrophic flooding to manageable flooding in Tampa Bay. But obviously it's catastrophic flooding along the coast all the way down into uh, Manatee, Sarasota counties, and probably even south of that into Fort Myers. Okay, so here are your takeaways. I'm going to leave you with this. We are likely to have a major hurricane Wednesday somewhere in the Bay Area, the strongest storm in 100 years. The landfall is likely to be near Tampa Bay. But which side of the bay is paramount in terms of how destructive the storm is going to be? Tomorrow, finish your preps. Make sure you finish your plans. You go over those plans with your family. And then Tuesday, that's the last day to evacuate. Some of us will be evacuating tomorrow. Others can wait until Tuesday, but Wednesday, it becomes precarious on the roads. Can, Eric, can you bring up the graphic again? That was scenario one. I want to highlight something for our audience here. We're about to get to your questions, folks, on Facebook Live, YouTube Live as well. We see that there's already hundreds of questions in the queue, but we are going to get to as many of them as possible. But I, I, this is season six of Tracking the Tropics. I, I've been, this is the sixth year that I'm doing this. And I, I've been listening to our meteorologists for many, many years. And they have always, you know, made it clear that the worst case scenario for Tampa Bay would be a storm that would be basically moving in this similar yes. direction and moving all of that storm surge directly into the bay. See mm -hmm. those arrows, folks, the red arrows? This is that when I saw this graphic, this was the graphic, Jeff, that made my heart drop because this this is basically what you've been talking about since I mean the first few months that I met you about the worst possible outcome for Tampa and the surrounding area. So the Tampa Bay Times years ago did a scenario did a, uh, a bunch of scenarios, they ran computer models, and what they looked at is what's the worst case scenario in terms of the direction of the storm coming in and Eric and, and JB, what they found is that storms that come in from the west are the worst, directly from the west. This is coming from the southwest, but it's not coming at the angle of Idalia or Helene from the deep from the south southwest. So it gets worse as you have a more direct, uh, a more direct line into Tampa Bay. So this is, uh, you know, would be a worst case, case scenario, but only if it makes landfall north of the Skyway. And something that Eric and I were talking about at the desk before, Eric, 12 miles. 12 miles is the difference between Pasa Grill and Anna Maria Island. And it's the difference between what would be a $100 billion storm and a $200 plus billion storm, just that 12-mile difference in where the storm goes. Not only that, but the people affected as well in the Bay Area versus uh, Sarasota, Manatee mm -hmm. County. And what's interesting about the storm that's moving from west to east, and may, many people may not be able to kind of uh, figure it out in your head, but imagine the waves being pushed from the western Gulf of Mexico eastward, and the momentum just keeps on pushing those waves to the east because the storm's moving to the east. So those waves continue to build up, and even if the storm weakens a little bit, we're not really seeing much weakening of those waves because mm -hmm. the mo momentum from the western Gulf all the way to the eastern Gulf, it's pretty much moving parallel to where it's pushing the waves all the way into the mm -hmm. Bay Area, which, again, is different than Helene uh, and some other storms that are pretty much from south to north. So this would be the worst-case scenario.